Welcome to the last leg of the July GPU launch gauntlet, which started with the RTX 2060 and 2070 Supers, which came out back at the beginning of this month, followed very closely by the AMD Navi Radeon RX 5700 and 5700 XT, a scant five days later. Now it is time to put the RTX 2080 Super to the test. This time I have not only the Founders Edition straight from Nvidia, but also a third party model from Zotac, the RTX 2080 Super Amp Edition. Should you be super amped about this launch? Stick around to find out. And if you want to check out my coverage of those other launches I mentioned, links are down in the description. Excellent! The Hydro X series is Corsair's new line of custom cooling parts built for the world's most powerful and stunning systems. They've gone all out with CPU and graphics card water blocks, pump reservoir combos, fittings, tubing, radiators, and coolant, providing you with everything you need to build a spectacular custom cooling loop that lowers system temperatures and improves performance, complete with vivid RGB lighting. Click the sponsor link in the video description to learn more. So first off, NVIDIA wasn't in as much of a rush to launch the 2080 Super, and that's because it doesn't have as much competition up in the $700 price range where it now sits. It's sort of confusing to describe the pricing of these cards in consumer-friendly terms. The original RTX 2080, which launched in September 2018, was $700, but the Founders Edition was $800. You could still find $700 RTX 2080s, but they usually felt very cut down and entry level for a $700 investment with bare minimum power delivery and cheaper plastic shrouds. The the new 2080 Super Founders Edition starts at $700, so you could maybe look at this as a price drop if you felt the original 2080's price was fair, of course. I'll leave that decision to your discretion, but the main point now is that if you're looking for an RTX 2080 Super, you really shouldn't be paying much more than $700, bucks because that's what the Founders Edition costs, and it is a quite good card with a wraparound metal backplate and an overall premium feel, and it maintains good clock speeds. The Zotac Amp Edition of the RTX 2080 Super has a dual fan cooler as well, but features a custom PCB with an improved 16 plus 4 phase power delivery setup, as well as a modest overclock, a boost clock of 1845 megahertz versus the Founders Edition's 1815. The amp also requires two 8-pin PCIe power connectors versus the Founders Edition's 8 plus 6. Both cards feature nice back plates, and the Founders Edition sticks with the green GeForce RTX lighting versus the Zotac Amps RGB logo. More on performance in just a minute, but back to the question of competition. Is there any from the AMD Radeon side? The answer is absolutely yes for the 2060 Super and 2070 Super, which are pitted against the RX 5700, which now goes for 350 bucks, and the 5700X XT, which goes for $400, but there are no 5800 GPUs from the Navi lineup, at least not yet as far as I'm aware, so the RTX 2080 Super must be content to compete with the existing RTX 2080, and maybe the Radeon 7 from Team Red, but that card already struggles against the RTX 2070 non-Super, so we shouldn't expect too much. Also, there's rumors that it's going end of life. Ultimately, Nvidia is competing with themselves with this launch, but hopefully the upshot is that gamers who are looking to spend about $700 on a GPU can now get a bit more for their money. Let's run down some specs before we get to the testing though. The big boost for the 2080 Super is faster memory. The fastest GDDR6 in the world according to Nvidia running at 15.5 gigabits per second which improves bandwidth up to 496 gigabytes per second. Beyond that the CUDA core count is boosted to 3072 versus 2944 with the 2080 non-super. Base and boost clocks are also juiced up to 1650 and 1815 megahertz respectively and total GPU power is increased to 250 watts versus is 215 watts for the non-super. That gets you up to speed on the core specs, so let's get to my test numbers, starting with a look at clock speeds. Here we're looking at listed base and boost clocks for the cards, as well as the peak clock speed hit during testing, and the most important information, the actual sustained average clock speed. Compare, if you will, the ASUS Strix RTX 2080 Ti benchmark numbers if you want an example of why base and boost clocks don't always have a big impact. It has the lowest base and boost, 1350 and 1650, but the highest peak clock of 20 10. But under sustained load, it drops down to a more reasonable 1,815 megahertz. The 2080 Supers both hit 1,995 max, but averaged at 1920 or 1935, with the Zotac amp just barely edging out the Founders Edition. The power draw numbers looked pretty good to me overall as well. As expected, the 2080 Supers drew more power overall compared to the non-Super 2080 by about 10 to 20 watts, and this is looking at total system power consumption, by the way. The only thing that makes the 2080 Supers look not as good is 
is the 2080 Ti, which only drew about 20 watts more while dominating the benchmarks we'll be looking at in just a second. Of course, you have to pay over $1,000 for the 2080 Ti. It's very power efficient, but not budget efficient. Finally, for temperatures, the RTX 2080 Supers did get warm, peaking at over 80 C for both the Founders Edition and the Zotac Amp. They were able to maintain clock speeds at these temperatures though, so fortunately, there wasn't a big drop off in frequency once they went past 80 C. Now let's get into some real benchmarks, but first a quick look at my test bed, which is based on an ASRock Z390 Tai Chi Ultimate motherboard and an Intel Core i9 9900K CPU running at 4.8 gigahertz across all cores. It's cooled by the new Noctua NH-U12A tower cooler. The memory is a kit of G-Skill Royal RGB at 3600 megahertz cast latency 16, and we're running Windows 10 version 1903, which is installed on a 512 gig Samsung 970 Pro M.2 NVMe SSD. The system is powered by a PC power and cooling 750 watt power supply, and we're using an open test bed, not a case, just FYI. For comparison, I'm including all of the Radeon benchmarks from the Navi launch video, and I've also included an RTX 2080 Ti, although it's not the Founders Edition, it's the Asus ROG Strix 2080 Ti, which is overclocked, so it's probably not fair, but I don't care. This only costs $22 more than the Founders Edition on Amazon right now, so deal with it. And, and yes, buy this over the Founders Edition if you have the opportunity and you're spending $1,200 on a graphics card. I'm getting distracted. All that said, let's get into the benchmarks. Let's start off with 3D Mark Firestrike Ultra. This is running at Ultra 4K mode and it's a DirectX 11 synthetic test. For all of my percentage comparisons I'm gonna make here, I'm using the Founders Edition RTX 2080 for my zero point. So I'll tell you the percentage difference from the 2080. So here, the Founders Edition 2080 Super is 3.8% faster and the Zotac 2080 Super is 4.1% faster versus the standard RTX 2080. The 2080 Ti, meanwhile, is 28.3% faster and this is a trend we're gonna see throughout my tests we're looking at zero to 5% improvement for the super cards compared to the non-super. Next up is 3D Mark Time Spy Extreme, also a synthetic, but this time running with the DirectX 12 API. Here we saw 3.3% faster performance from the Founders Edition 2080 Super and 3.7% faster performance from the Zotac 2080 Super, again, as compared to the standard RTX 2080. 2080 Ti, meanwhile, was 31.4% faster. My last synthetic is 3D Mark VR Mark Blue Room, which is a virtual reality-based test, also by 3D Mark. Here, again, Again, the RTX 2080 Super outperformed the standard RTX 2080 by about 5%, whereas the Zotac Amp RTX 2080 Super came in just behind at about 4.4% faster. Next up, we have Ashes of the Singularity Escalation, running at 4K 3840 by 2160. This is again a DirectX 12 test, and I'm using the crazy preset. At 4K, the Founders Edition 2080 Super was about 1.2% faster than the Founders Edition RTX 2080. Meanwhile, the Zotac RTX 2080 Super was about 0.4% slower versus a standard RTX 2080. Fortunately, this trend didn't continue throughout the rest of the test. This was the only test where the Zotac card was a little bit slower. Here looking at 2560 by 1440 for Ashes of the Singularity Escalation. Again, the Founders Edition 2080 Super is faster, about 1.7% faster than a standard RTX 2080. The Zotac card, once again, was 1.3% slower in this test. Not performance I would be extremely proud of, but fortunately, as I moved on through the rest of the test, the Zotac card did recover. If we move on to 1920 by 1080 for Ashes of the Singularity, the Founders Founders Edition 2080 Super was 2.5% faster than the Founders Edition RTX 2080, and the Zotac 2080 Super was about 0.6% faster, so it did recover at 1080. Moving on to Shadow of the Tomb Raider next. This is a DirectX 12 test running at the high presets at 3840 by 2160 or 4K. The Founders Edition 2080 Super had 64.6 .6 average frames per second. That's about 6.4% faster than the Founders Edition RTX 2080. Meanwhile, the Zotac had a huge recovery here and was actually 7.1% faster than the standard RTX 2080 with its average frame rate of 65 frames per second. Moving down to 2560 by 1440 resolution in Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Here, the Founders Edition 2080 Super is 3.8% faster than the standard RTX 2080. The Zotac RTX 2080 Super is 4.4% faster. So here the Zotac recovered once again and did beat the Founders Edition. Finally, at 1920 by 1080, it was a much tighter race. The Founders Edition 2080 Super is just 0.5% faster than the standard RTX 2080, while the Zotac was 1.3% faster with its average frame rate of 150.5. Moving on to GTA 5, the old standby. This is still a DirectX 11 test at 4K 3840 by 21. The Founders Edition 2080 Super is 5.1% faster than the RTX 2080 standard. Meanwhile, the Zotac RTX 2080 Super was 3.8% faster and in this test did not manage to beat out the Founders Edition. If we move over to 2560 by 1440, the Founders Edition 2080 Super is about 3.5% faster than the standard RTX 2080 with its average frame rate of 147 FPS. 
The Zotac was just a tick slower at 146 frames per second, so about 3.7% faster than the RTX 2080 standard. And finally, at 1920 by 1080 in GTA 5, the Founders Edition 2080 Super was 3.2% faster than the standard RTX 2080, and the Zotac Amp RTX 2080 Super was 2.5% faster than the standard RTX 2080, with its average frame rate of 162. Next up is Battlefield 5. This is running at ultra settings in DirectX 11 mode here at 4K 3840 by 2160. The Founders Edition 2080 Super is 4.7% faster than the standard RTX 2080 with an average frame rate of 67 FPS. The Zotac again was just a tick slower at 66 FPS, so 3.1% faster than a standard RTX 2080. Meanwhile, at 2560 by 1440, the Founders Edition 2080 Super is about 4.6% faster than a standard RTX 2080, and the Zotac is about 3.7% faster than an RTX 2080. Again, just a tick behind here, 112 FPS for the Zotac versus 113 FPS for the Founders Edition. Finally, at 1920 by 1080 in Battlefield 5, the Founders Edition 2080 Super was 2.1% faster than a standard RTX 2080, and the Zotac did get the win over the Founders Edition, although again, just by one frame with 144 FPS versus 143. Let's take a look at our Overwatch numbers. This is running on the Epic setting, which is pretty overkill for Overwatch, so if you are looking at real frame rates here, you can get better frame rates by dialing stuff back just a little bit. That said, at 4K 3840 by 2160, Founders Edition 2080 Super was 2% faster than a standard RTX 2080, and the Zotac was 1% faster than a standard RTX 2080. So not a huge difference here, and it's even closer, actually, if we move over to 2560 by 1440. Here, the Founders Edition 2080 Super was pretty much exactly the same. We had 196 frames per second on both the 2080 and the 2080 Super. The Zotac card was not to be outdone, though. It came in at 198 FPS, so it's about 1% faster. Finally, at 1920 by 1080, once again, the Founders Edition 2080 Super exactly on par with the Founders Edition RTX 2080. No difference between the two. And again, the Zotac comes in 1% faster with an overall frame rate of 289 versus 286. And our final game test here is also one of my newest. This is Metro Exodus running in DirectX 12 mode at 4K 3840 by 2160. The Founders Edition 2080 Super is just 1% faster than a standard RTX 2080 with an average frame rate of 40.6 versus 40.2. The Zotac card did just a little bit better here with an average frame rate of 40.9. That puts it 1.7% faster than the standard RTX 2080. If we move over to 2560 by 1440, the Founders Edition 2080 Super is 4.7% faster than a standard RTX 2080. And the Zotac attack is 5.9% faster here since it managed to get 67.9 average frames per second. It is the winner, unless of course you've been looking at the 2080 Ti numbers this whole time, which scored 80.9 FPS. Man, the 2080 Ti is, is a very powerful card. And finally, at 1920 by 1080, the Founders Edition 2080 Super is 2% faster than the standard RTX 2080, with an average frame rate of 83.7 versus 82. Meanwhile, the Zotac is 5.9% faster with an average frame rate of 85.1. And of course, everything is behind the RTX 2080 Ti as it has been in all of my tests, which managed an average frame rate of 102.7 in this test. Once again, I have a couple cumulative slides here to give you guys a more wholesome view of all of my tests and the differences between the various cards. Again, I'm using the RTX 2080 Standard Founders Edition for my baseline here with 100% of the score, and you can see the percentage differences up and down the stack. The RTX 2080 Super Founders Edition actually outperformed the Zotac Amp RTX 2080 Super, but by a very slim margin. We were at 3% better with the Zotac card, 3.4% better with the RTX 2080 Super. I think this comes down to ASIC quality between the two cards because performance-wise, they were both acting exactly the same as I was running the test, just minor variance between the two. Of course, again, the RTX 2080 Ti is going to dominate throughout. 28.8% faster here just shows you how far ahead that card is. I'm not gonna say that means it's justified to charge as much money as Nvidia actually charges for it, but yes, there's still a lot of headroom with their architecture and the 2080 Ti is what you have to get in order to get that headroom. For now though, at least we are looking at better performance with the super cards. If we look at 2560 by 1440, again, we're looking at just about a 3% bump in performance for the 2080 super cards, whether you're looking at the Founders Edition or the Zotac Amp version. Again, just a slight edge by the 2080 Super Founders Edition here at 3.1% faster versus 2.8% faster for the Zotac Amp. 
We had about a 22% lead for the RTX 2080 Ti at 1440, and then you can see the rest of the cards in the stack as they line up. One final slide here, and this is just taking those percentage differences, adding them to a chart so it's a bit more visually digestible for you guys. And then I've also added the price of each card so you can kind of get a visual representation of those to sort of cross-examine and see, all right, you get more for your money with this card or less for your money with this card. Obviously, the RTX 2080 Ti is the very expensive card here, which also has the most performance. It's going to be up to you whether or not that performance is worth the money. I wasn't exactly sure what to put for the pricing for the RTX 2080, but for what it's worth, I used the Founders Edition pricing, which is what is indicating that there is a price drop for the 2080 Super being 700 bucks versus the standard RTX 2080 being 800 bucks. All that said though, hopefully this chart is giving you a better idea of the value that you are getting for your money. Okay, so let's draw some conclusions from all of this. Is the RTX 2080 Super a good card? I would say yes, although it's a bit less exciting because it's 700 bucks, which is expensive for a lot of consumers out there, and it's not providing us with as much of a jump in performance compared to the previous version if you compare it to the 2060 Super and 2070 Super launches. That said, if you were considering an RTX 2080 for 700 to $800 last week, you can now get a 2080 Super. That's a bit faster this week, and hopefully you won't need to pay more than $700. Maybe $700 30 or 750 bucks if it's a special third-party design. I actually don't know the price of this Zotac Amp 2080 Super right now. That's still being decided one day before launch, but I wouldn't spend too much more than 700 bucks on it, is what I'm trying to say. Third-party designs aren't necessarily going to net you a huge bump in performance compared to the Founders Edition, so I just wouldn't recommend spending more for some RGB lighting and overbuilt power delivery that doesn't ultimately equal more performance. For the same price, then you're making more of an aesthetic decision between the two, and yes, then I would probably lean more towards the Zotac because there's some additional value in that proposition. I think the real mix-up in the high-end space for GPUs will come if and when Radeon launches cards that compete in the $500 to $700 range, but until then, I think PC gamers who are building systems in, say, the $1,400 to $2,000 range for the whole system will be happy with the 2080 Super, if you can't afford the 2080 Ti, of course. And I think that's a good spot to end this video. Hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed it, and let me know in the comment section down below what you think of the RTX 2080 Super. Who's gonna buy one? Maybe a few of you will. Thanks for watching this video though, guys, and we'll see you in the next one.